Hello there everyone and welcome. This is the start of our November video hop. So if you want even more inspiration using the new products, please keep watching and hopping along with us today on the video hop. So let's get into creating. I am using the fabulous Stamp Wheel 2.0 today and also the very pretty Build a Garden Breezy Petals. This is beautiful. So for one card, I am gonna have one of the um, images done in an outline fashion and then the other one we're gonna do with embossing. The smaller one I am gonna use for the kind of outline look and we are gonna be using the simple coloring stencils with this. So for the smaller image that we have on the stamp set, I'm just gonna stamp this onto a piece of white cardstock. This is classic Crest Solder White. And I'm just stamping that using the Jet Black ink from All to New. So for the other image, the larger one that we have in the stamp set, I am gonna be embossing this onto some vellum. So I have a piece of vellum here. You can see that it's slightly larger than my stamp wheel. So I've just removed the side so I can get it all in without having to kind of cut this up right away. And as we are gonna be heat embossing onto the vellum, I have added some anti-static powder down. I've just brushed that around with a dry brush. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna pop my image into place and then adhere it to the flip plate of my stamp wheel. Because I do want to emboss this, I am using some embossing ink. Now you don't necessarily have to use embossing ink. If you have the cloud white pigment ink, you could also use that because it does stay a little bit more wet than usual inks. So you can use that to do your embossing if you want to as well. I want a white outline on this. So I am gonna be using the pure white embossing powder. I'm just adding that all over the image and then tapping off the excess. You wanna be able to remove all of that excess. If you have bits that you don't want around, just knock those off with a paintbrush before you heat set. So once I have that heat set, I've just moved that over to the side and I'm back on to the kind of outline image that we have just done. And I'm just gonna use the simple coloring stencil set to color these in. So this is one of the stencils that you have in the Build a Garden set and it is ever so pretty. And I'm gonna be using some of the Peachy Glow and a mini blending tool just to add some, a touch of like this yellowy buttercream color to the tips of the petals. So as you can see for those top ones, because they're kind of sideways on, I've just added it to the tops of those. The flower that we're doing here, because it is open, I'm trying to add some of that ink to all of the petals. So I'm kind of just going all the way around that one there. So once that has been done, I'm then gonna go in to a pink color to add into the center. For the pink color, I am gonna be using the fabulous strawberry. This is a very light pink, but I think that I had a lot of pink already on this blending tool, so it's slightly off, but it's still a very pretty color nonetheless. So I'm gonna keep going with that. I'm adding that to the base of the flowers, and then for that, pet that flower sorry, that we have in the bottom, I'm adding that to the center. Once I have done with that, I'm just gonna remove this stencil and then we're gonna add in the little kind of petal that we have over here. And I'm just gonna be using the peachy glow just to add the top part of that petal there. It is very, very pretty and very delicate. So once I have finished with that, what I'm gonna to need to do then is add in the second layer. Now the second layer is on this stencil as well. So I'm just gonna pop that into place. And as you can see, I'm using my sticky mat and just kind of popping the stencil down onto that sticky mat, pressing it down, that's really gonna keep that in place. It also means that you don't have to use any tape for this, which is fabulous. So once that has been done, I am gonna add a darker shading to this layer. I'm using the dusky pink for where I've added that um, pink. So at the bottom of the petals and also at the center of that bottom flower. And then we are gonna add a darker yellowy orange to where we added the yellowy orange before. And this is the golden honeycomb. And I'm just gonna add that around the tips of the petals to add that kind of beautiful mix and match look. So once all that one has been done, that is all of the layers for the flowers. And it just looks so, so pretty. And it looks like you've put far more effort into it than we actually did. 
So once that has been done, we're then going to add in the leaves. So again, this is just going to line up with that kind of outline of the stamp that we have there. So it's really easy to line up. So for this layer here, I will be using the fabulous Jade inks. I love these color. They're kind of like a silvery green gray that you kind of get on a frosted like eucalyptus tree. So this, that's the kind of colors that it was inspired by. And I love this set. It's very good. I think that it's great for kind of um, frosty winter cards as well. So if you are going along that line, this might be the kind of colors that you want to go with. So I've just lined up that second part of the leaves there. And again, I've gone in with the jade for that one there. For the center, I'm gonna add a little tiny touch of the amber blaze. And then that is all of that all completed there. So that was stencil number five. I'm gonna move on to stencil number three and we have the second layer for the leaves on this one here. So I'm just gonna line that one up. And as I was talking about eucalyptus before, we are going to be using the eucalyptus ink for this layer here. So I'm just using a small blending tool to add the ink through the stencil. I'm trying to add more of that ink towards the kind of base of the leaves and the stems just to add that really beautiful kind of gradient effect there. I'm then going to go on to the stitched scalloped circles. This is one of the die sets from Altenew that is kind of a basic staple. So if you don't have any like scalloped circles in your stash, this may be one that you want to go for. And it does have the stitched detailing to both sides of the cut line. So that means when you cut out the circles, you're going to have a stitch line around the kind of die cut, but then you're also going to have a stitch line on the piece that you've cut it out of. So you can create windows with a little bit of added detail and also the circles themselves will have some added detail. Because my die cut machine is a little bit dirty, I do add a little bit of white paper on top of anything white that I do tend to die cut. So it means that I don't have to um, clean my machine. I can just use that paper to make sure that none of those dirty marks from my plates go onto my panel. So if you're wondering why I had that paper, that's why. So once that has been cut so I used three of those little scalloped circles onto that panel which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I just kind of randomly place them and I'm then going to add this whole panel into the Mod Squares um, 3D embossing folder from Altenew. So if you're using a Platinum 6 I just use the same sandwich as I would for a cutting mat, uh, for die cutting, but I remove one of the cutting plates. So that's the only thing I do differently when I'm using a 3D embossing folder as opposed to the dies. Once that's done, I'm just gonna cut out all of the little um, pieces that we've already stamped and colored. I'm just using the coordinating dies from the Builder Garden set. So I now have the kind of vellum piece cut out and also the colored piece. And we're going to play around with the vellum piece first. Now, what I want to do is I want to have these kind of vellum flowers peeking through those little scalloped circle windows that we've created on the panel. I, you could have just popped this on and it would have covered all of those three circles, you know, as it is. But I wanted to have a little bit more kind of room to play with how I wanted my flowers to look through each of the windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line one up, then I'm going to cut around the piece, add it in place with a little bit of foam tape, and then I can play around with the piece that I've just cut and then add that behind another window. So I'm going to get a different kind of look. But like I said, if you wanted to just place this whole thing down beneath the windows, you're still going to get some of that design peeking through each of them, but you don't have as much kind of wiggle room if you're if you don't want to cut it. If you want to just keep it as one piece, you can do that as well. So I'm just adding the second one on and I'm just going down through the size of windows. So for the largest one, I'm obviously going to need a larger piece. So it made sense for me to work there first, then go to the medium one and then to the smaller piece where I just need a tiny bit of that beautiful um, embossed image that we have there. Once I have all of those pieces in place, I'm just going to add some foam tape all the way over this panel. I do find that adding the glue tape over the kind of edges of the embossed piece really helps that stay in place. 
To finish the kind of background for this card, I wanted to create a little ink blended piece behind it. Thinking back on this now, I should have added a little bit of green in these circles as well. I think that would have made it pop a little bit more, but I'm just using the same colors as I did for the flower on the other card. So I've used strawberry, dusty pink. I have also used the peachy glow and the golden honeycomb. But like I said, I should have added some of that green in. I think that would have added a little bit more difference to this. And I think it would have made it look a little bit better than it does. I mean, I like it, but I think the green would have made it look a little bit better. So if you're playing around with it, maybe add a different color in too. I am using the larger banner from the Mini Delight Celebratory banner because I just thought that this would be really cute poking out from behind this little piece that I have here. So I tried the smaller kind of stitched circle on top and I didn't think it worked out so I tried the larger one and then I thought if I move that banner over slightly it's going to work a little bit better. So that's the kind of cluster we're going to go with on the card. I have a panel which is a quarter of an inch smaller on all of the sides than a four and a quarter by five and a half and I've just used that mod squares again to add texture to that panel before adding that down with a little bit of instant dimension foam tape. We're then going to add our little cluster into place so I have that kind of largest of the stitched circles that we die cut from the other panel. I'm just going to add that lining that up with the side piece that we have. We also have the little vellum banner which I think adds a really beautiful soft touch to this and really draws the eye to the focal flower that we're trying to add your attention to. I'm just going to add some foam tape behind the flower but not on the kind of vellum. So I have attached it together with a little bit of the foam tape just to keep it all in place but you don't want to add the vellum behind the kind of vellum because it will be seen. So just keep an eye on that when you're adding that down. I then cut this panel. Maybe I should not have, but I did. I cut a quarter of an inch off the sides of this. And then I'm going to add this onto a card base, which, again, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I really wish I'd have added a little bit of green, but we're here now and this is how it's going. So now I have my little panel here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of the backing tape from the Instant Dimension foam tape and just pop that onto the card base. So we now have our two cards nearly complete. The only thing we need to do now is add a sentiment and a little bit of splatter. So I'm adding the kind of um, rose gold metallic watercolor paints down onto have a, add a little bit of splatter. And I just think this is a really beautiful color. I then wanted to bring that color in a little bit more. So I'm going to use this for my sentiment. So all I'm doing is I have a piece of cardstock. It's not watercolor cardstock. It's just normal cardstock. I'm not worrying if this is going to kind of bend and bow slightly, but I'm just adding that paint onto that piece of cardstock so I can use that as a sentiment. I've just moved that over to the side so that dries. For the kind of shadow on the sentiment, I have some vellum. I've added some double-sided tape on there and then cut the shadow pieces for the sentiments out of that. Once that has been done, I have my little piece of cardstock that we have colored in with the metallic watercolor. And I'm just gonna add this to some double-sided adhesive. This double-sided adhesive sheet is so, so handy to have. I, as you can see, I did add that behind the vellum. And because I have the whole piece of vellum covered, you're not gonna see the adhesive. So that's really clever way of kind of sticking things down with vellum if you cover it all the way over with some double-sided adhesive. So once I have the two pieces cut, so I have this top piece that was cut out of the watercolor um, paper that we did. So we painted it with the watercolor just on normal cardstock. And then I've cut that out of the kind of the sentiment piece. And then the vellum we have behind there. So I'm just gonna layer these up. The Perfect Picker is fabulous for helping you kind of get dyes um, die cuts out of the dies, also for placement as well. So I am using that to help me kind of tease these out. These sentiments are a little bit delicate, especially if you use like paint on them as well. They It does make them a little bit more prone to tearing if you don't let them dry properly, which I haven't. So I was being very careful when I was popping these down onto the kind of vellum that we have underneath. 
So I've, I have the hello and the just note from the scripty sentiments die set. I'm sorry if I didn't mention it before, but that is where they're from. I'm then going to add these two sentiments in place. And as you can see, because we had that whole piece of adhesive on the, on the back of the vellum, you don't see that there's adhesive there and it looks so cool. So I'm just going to add these flat down onto my cards and there we go. They look very pretty. I did think that it was lacking a little bit of sparkle though. I, I wanted some sparkle on these and I thought that these gem sparkles would be the perfect addition. So I'm just going to add a few of those to each of the cards. So here we go. Here are the cards complete. Two different ways to use the Builder Garden Breezy Petals and they are very, very pretty cards. I really do hope that you've enjoyed the video and that you like the techniques involved. If you make a card inspired by this, it'd be great if you share because we'd love to see. Don't forget to hop along with the rest of the blog hop. We can't wait to see what you come up with using this new release. Hey there, Lydia here. I really do hope that you've just enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe to the Alta New YouTube channel. Also turn on the notification bell so you can get your daily dose of crafty techniques and tutorials just like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.